Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Leica Deluxe. Now, normally I review Sony cameras, but from time to time it's nice to use other cameras. This way I can compare it to Sony, you know, things like that. So, this one caught my eye. I always wanted to try a Leica camera out, and I'm just doing a quick review here of this camera. I'm not going to go insane in depth on it. Basically, what this camera is, it's, it's the same camera as the Panasonic LX100, for the most part but Leica decided to create a version of their own. So they finished it off a little bit different. The buttons on the back are labeled a little bit different, but basically the camera's identical as far as I can tell. So first of all, if you want to save some money and you're interested in this camera, check out the Panasonic LX100. Also, the LX100 II is scheduled to come out mid-October. So that's an updated version of this camera. Now, this camera goes for about $1,100. And it's basically, in my opinion, with the manual design of it, it's really oriented for those people that want the hands-on experience. You know, they really, you really enjoy dialing in the shutter speed, dialing in the lens aperture, and things like that. It's, it's like a mechanical, a mechanical mind-oriented person, in, in my opinion, is, is somebody that would appreciate a camera like this. Because, um, you know, you have physically have to turn stuff and you really have to understand photography. You have to know what aperture means and does. You have to know what shutter speed means and does uh, in order to really enjoy the experience for what it's engineered for. With that being said, however, it does have awesome auto mode features. So there's a button on the top of the camera. You can just hit it. It says A and that turns the camera into full auto. You can also put the lens in full auto mode it has an a on the lens and same thing with the shutter speed has an a and that will just enable the camera into auto mode okay so it, it does have the ability for beginners to shoot and get great results as well but like i said the way it's designed it's it's really designed more for the hands-on user okay not somebody that's just looking to touch buttons but somebody that's really looking to dial things in okay so that's my impression now the camera body is really well made it's a metal body uh, it has some ports on the side. It's got an HDMI and a USB port. It has really nice dials. It has an exposure comp dial here on the side. The feedback is excellent. You're not going to accidentally turn the exposure comp dial. The shutter speed dial as well has got really nice feedback. It's got just enough effort, so you're not going to turn it by mistake. And um, it's got some manual controls for the lens here on the side to switch from manual focus to autofocus and then autofocus macro mode. It has a lens cap. Okay, so you can put filters on the front of this lens. You can attach filters. So it has a micro four thirds sensor in here, which is a large sensor, okay? And it also has a 24 to 75 equivalent Leica lens built in. And the lens is really high quality, exceptionally good quality as a matter of fact. Just like the Sony Zeiss lenses, you know, the Leica lens is really good quality, okay? All right, so the lens goes from f1.7 wide open at 24 millimeter, and then when you zoom into 75 millimeter, it slows down to f2.8. But with such a large micro four third sensor, that really does result in some awesome background separation, okay? It is more powerful than the Sony RX100 series in that way. The Sony has the one inch sensor. This micro four third sensor is quite a bit larger, and the minimum focus distance on this camera is actually three centimeters when you're at 24 millimeter. So you can really get close to stuff and take photos and then the background just blurs and butters out. And for close up photography, this is a great solution for a point and shoot style camera. So the Leica Deluxe also has a built-in electronic viewfinder, which is really nice. It's always available, so you don't have to worry about popping it up to use it. You can just put your eye up to it and use it at any time. There's actually a button on the camera to enable it, to turn the screen off, and so if you just want to use the viewfinder, you can put it in that mode as well. The screen on the back is high resolution. The viewfinder is also very high resolution. It looks great. The screen on the back looks really good as well. It does not articulate at all though. It's a fixed screen. It's not a touch screen either, but it is pretty high quality. I did notice though, the highlights tend to blow out on the screen here when you're looking at them. Uh, I noticed it with some water shots. So it looked like I blew out the shot, but then when I imported it on the computer, the images weren't blown out. It just looked like that on the screen here. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Ergonomics wise, the camera feels pretty good. It's thick enough where when you grab it, you, you it feels pretty sturdy. The RX100 series, for example, is so much thinner 
then it's a little bit more awkward to hold that camera than this camera, in my opinion. It has a uh, built-in hot shoe on here, so you have to actually put the flash in. It comes with the flash, but there's no built-in flash, okay? So that's kind of a negative, depending on your needs. It's got stereo mics on the top here for recording, so make sure you don't cover that with your finger when you're recording video. The video quality on this camera is really good. It does 4K video. It can do up to 15-minute clips, unlike the Sony RX100 series that stops at 5-minute clips. So this can go up to 15 minute clips, okay? It does record it into an MP4 format, so you can easily upload it to the web. Now, comparing this to the Sony camera, which is really why I reviewed this camera, the autofocus is not as good. It's, it's pretty quick, it's pretty snappy, but it does not focus as fast as the Sony cameras. It's, it's not as accurate either, I notice. Same thing with video. When in video mode, the focus just doesn't respond the same way. It's not as fast, it's a little bit choppy. It, it just doesn't seem to know what to focus on as well as the Sony's. It does work good, uh, don't get me wrong, the video works really well, but when you're comparing it to the Sony cameras, it's not as good. As far as colors go, the colors are pretty good on this camera. They do render quite a bit different than the Sony camera, however. The auto white balance, I notice, fluctuates quite a bit. If you don't lock it down to a specific white balance, it will fluctuate on you. If you're recording video, it'll go from warm to cool back to warm. The Sony's tend to be much more stable with the auto white balance in that regard. Same thing with auto exposure and metering. The metering tends to fluctuate a lot more than the Sony camera as well. And when you're using average metering mode, I notice when I zoom in, the metering will change quite a bit, like over half a stop. Uh, the Sony's don't tend to do that as much. They do also fluctuate on the Sony cameras, don't get me wrong, but not as much as I noticed on this. One thing I particularly like about this is the really high quality mechanical buttons, like the on off switch, it just feels really good. It has a filter button here on the top, okay? And when you click that button, there's like 20 different filters or approximately 20 different filters to choose from and they're awesome. You can shoot in raw quality and use those filters. That's a really nice feature because it's so easy to get to them and they look great and you can manipulate them quite a bit in post because they're raw quality. So that's a very nice feature. The Leica also has a lot of nice screen display modes. You can hit the display button on the back of the camera and change the way the screen looks. It's got a lot of nice display modes. It also has quite a few focus modes to choose from, which is nice, like focus area modes. It has, it's very, very vast in that area. You can control where you, where you put the focus points. You can even make custom focus points. It's got quite a few drive modes as well. So you can do auto bracketing, um, things like that. The menu system itself is just awesome. It's way easier to navigate compared to the Sony menu system. Much better, in my opinion, the way this is, is designed. Also on the back, there's a quick menu button. And if you click that button, it's very similar to the function menu on the Sony camera systems. It brings you into the menu to all the key features that you might need. And that's a really well thought out idea. Like I said, it's very similar to the Sony but it's much easier than digging into the menu. Although, like I said already, the menu system on this camera is really great. It's very easy to find exactly what you want, unlike the Sony menu system, which is just confusing. All right, so when compared to the RX100 series, this is the Mark V, the new one, the A, the 5A in particular. The camera body itself is just a lot bigger, okay? So you could see here the difference in size. So, you know, it's not a negative on the Leica side, it's just a difference in the camera. And we're looking at very similar price points, you know, around $1,000 or so, roughly. The RX100 series is so ultra compact, you can fit it in your pocket. Now, the sensor is a little bit smaller on the Sony. It's only one inch versus the Micro Four Thirds, and that does make a big difference as far as background separation goes. And it actually has a little bit more power with some of the features, 24 frames per second, this one can only do about 7 or 11 with autofocus, but it can do 40 frames per second for in a burst mode. But this has a much larger buffer, so this is going to be a little bit better for action and things like that compared to the Leica. This just, like I said, it's just more of a turnkey. The flash is built in, so you don't have to attach a flash. The screen fully articulates on the Sony, so you can use it in selfie mode. The Leica doesn't do that either. Pretty big difference in that regard. But as far as price point goes, they're very similar. So depending on what your needs are, you know, the Sony does offer quite a few advantages. Like I said, the autofocus is better and things like that. Also, the Sony has a built-in three-stop ND filter. The Leica does not have that feature built in. When it comes to batteries, another really important feature, the Leica has a much larger battery and you'll get more shots out of the Leica. You're looking at about approximately 300 versus about 220 or something like that. 
The Sony weighs quite a bit less. It's a good 100 grams less. So we're looking at about 400 grams for the Leica and about 300 grams for the Sony. All right, guys, let's check out some lab photos, shall we? And then we will move on to some real world photos. So in the lab here, this is the minimum focus distance. I just wanted to show you the difference between wide open f1.7 versus f2.8, just, you know, stop down. So here's f2.8 and just look at the minimum focus distance. It's three centimeters, okay? That's really close. So I was very close to this edge of the quarter and you could see the lab scene just butters out quite nice and the background lights are nice big round bouquet balls and that's at f2.8. So now look at what f1.7 looks like. I mean, that's just like boom, it really, really butters out. I mean, that's just straight up gravy. All right, so here looking at the uh, quarter again, here's f1.7 and you can see the big round bouquet balls, they just look great and stop down to f2.8. The bouquet balls also look excellent and this lens is extremely sharp wide open. At f1.7, it's very sharp, take a look. I'll zoom in here on the corner and you can see the detail. It's very, very good, okay? It, it, obviously it sharpens up a little bit when you stop it down at f2.8. It, it does get a little bit sharper, but for wide open, it is sharper than the Sony RX100 at f1.8, okay? There is a difference and it is a little bit sharper wide open, at least based on the testing I did. All right, so looking here at the lab scene, there is a little bit of distortion with the lens. It does have a little bit of that but it's not that bad. Very similar to the Sony in that regard. Here's f1.7 wide open, 24 millimeter equivalent. And if you stop it down to f2.8, you could notice the vignette pulls away a little bit and you can also notice the bouquet balls right here change. You know, you could see that separation you're getting with that larger sensor. It does make quite a bit of difference, okay? So let me just zoom in a little bit here. This is at an equivalent of 75 millimeter and you can see the sharpness is very, very good. This is f2.8, which is wide open at the 75 millimeter. And if you stop it down to f4, it does crisp up that little bit more. And you could see it sharp all the way to the corner. Even at 2.8, you can see it's very sharp. You do see a little bit of fall off here on the top, but not much at all. Now ISO 100 is gonna be extremely clean. And I will zoom in. I'll actually go to two to one so you can get a better look. And let's just go up the chain here. Here's 100. Here's 800. Now 800, I skipped over because this is right where you start to see the noise come in. It's very similar to the RX105 I just reviewed as far as ISO goes. It's a little bit better at the max ISO, 12,800. Uh, when you compare that to the Sony, it is a little bit cleaner. Here's ISO 3200. You can see all the detail is still there. Uh, it's just starting to get a little bit grainy, you know. Uh, the noise is definitely introduced. At 6400, you can really start to see it, all right? And then we're looking at 12,800. Now here's where it gets pretty bad. Now this is at that threshold of are you gonna use the photo or not. But again, when you zoom out, it looks really good. And depending on what you're using the photos for, this is totally usable. And now 25,000, you can see the color shift. It does shift towards green. That's very common that the color shift happens when you go to these extremely high ISOs on the smaller sensor compact cameras. But again, uh, the, a lot of the detail is still there. You can still read the text on the crayons even. It's a little bit harder to read, but you can still read it. ISO performance is very good in my opinion. Very similar to the Sony RX100 series. Even though that sensor on the Sony is significantly smaller, it's very similar. All right, real world. I'm just going to bang through these really quick, guys. I don't want this review to be too long. Here's just a shot on the deck, and uh, I was extremely close to this reflector on Jace's toy, and I just wanted to show you how cool the railing looks when it butters out like that, okay? This is just a leaf on the glass windshield of my car, and you can see the, the out of focus area. I mean, it almost looks like a, a larger sensor than it actually is because you can get so close to your subject. It really just butters out way more than the Sony RX100 in particular, which is kind of what I'm comparing it to. So that is a huge advantage on the Leica over the RX100 is that background separation you get. The larger sensor and the minimum focus distance advantage makes a big difference. Now street photography, which is really, this is really what this camera is optimized for, in my opinion, is like a street shooter, somebody who really likes to manually control things on the street, but you can see the quality is excellent here in the street shots. So I focused on this bolt coming out of the wall just so you can see the out of focus area again. I love that background blur and the bouquet that this camera produces, it's remarkable. Here's just a cool Buddha painting. Here's the lens cap on the Leica, 
just looks phenomenal. And just look at that sharpness, okay? Here's a shot of Layla. You can see the sharpness is just remarkable. I mean, look at the strains of the hair and the background out of focus area. Just killer. Really, really good optical quality, guys. All right, so let's pound through some more photos here. Now, if you want to see comparative photos with the RX100, I just published my RX100 5A review, and a lot of these photos are the same. I had both cameras with me, and I took a lot of the same pictures, so you can really compare A to B. The difference with this is the background separation is quite a bit better on the Leica, especially with the shot like this. You can see the, the woods in the background just looks nice and buttery, more so than it did on the Sony. But otherwise, the image is very similar. So here is with a faster shutter speed. There is no built-in ND filter on the Leica, but it does have an aperture that you can stop down quite a bit. So here is with a higher shutter speed. You can see the water looks pretty choppy. And then I dialed in the aperture to f14, which gave me one third of a second. And you can see the water here looks quite a bit better. You know, much more silky looking. Here's just that sign again with a depth of field fall off shot. Looks pretty cool. And here's another water shot. Panorama mode. I took a couple panoramas and they came out really good. If you zoom in, it's very sharp. The detail is very good. The camera did a great job stitching it together. Here's just another image. Looking at the water, here's a fast shutter at f4. So you can see 1 80th of a second. The water is quite choppy. The lighting conditions were horrendous here. The, the sun was shining through and hitting the water directly. So that's going to blow out no matter what you do but it is what it is. The dynamic range is still pretty good on this camera. If I go over here, I can pull the highlights back quite a bit. You see that? And then I can bring the shadows up. Could raise the vibrance. I can actually raise the exposure just a little bit. And that area is still blown out in the center, but you can recover quite a bit with these raw files. So I just wanted to show you that. And then looking at just a weed, I'm looking down, you can see the background separation. It looks quite good. And here's another one. Again, I took these same shots with the Sony RX 105A. And here is just my shed. Now, looking at that cool lawn ornament thing that I showed uh, in the previous RX 100 review, you can see this looks very similar. Um, image quality at the end of the day is very similar, by the way. I mean, it's, it's really close, really close. Colors render a little bit different on the Leica. Uh, and the high ISO performance is a little better on the Leica as well. Uh, as, especially on a shot like this. This is the high ISO image here at 12,500 on the Leica. And I just wanted to show you the dynamic range, how you can manipulate, and I can pull the shadow detail out. I did recover quite a bit more than I was able to with the Sony RX100 comparatively, okay? So moving on here, just some water droplets. And here's just a cool rock I found. And this was at the minimum focus distance, wide open. And you can see just how sharp the clarity and the depth of field fall off is on this little rock and there's this is actually a staircase railing in the background and it just really butters out like you know just smooth gravy all right so here's just a lock I took and I thought it looked pretty cool because it has this brushed aluminum and you can see here how well the lens performs because in a shot like this normally you would see like a little green fringing or purple fringing but there's none of that on this particular image and that's really good that's because the optics are such high quality okay all right so now at the basher kill here i took a couple landscape photos the lighting wasn't the greatest here so it's a little flat looking but overall quality is exceptionally good in my opinion really nice renderings and then just shooting at some uh, grass you could see the depth of field now just real world looking at a picture of the church this is just a straight off the camera raw and it looks excellent you could see the sharpness and clarity is just remarkable in this stone church. Just beautiful. The blues look great. So this one I did edit a little bit, however. Um, so I added a bit of a vignette to help pull the eye in. I added a little bit of sharpening, a little bit of punch to it. And I just wanted to show you what an edited file can look like. And you can see this is really, really high quality. This is an, an exceptionally good quality uh, image in my opinion. Uh, the overall result is very good. It's a pro result and uh, you're definitely getting what you pay for when you uh, purchase a camera like this. There's no doubt about it. The quality is phenomenal. Leica did a great job, or Panasonic, however you want to look at it. Now here's just a uh, depth of field fall off shot looking at the brick in very pretty lighting. This was at the evening glow and you could see just remarkable. And the out of focus area is just phenomenal. 
Very, very nice out of focus area this lens produces. With that larger sensor, you can really get some good out of focus depth of field play. Okay, and just another image here. Just wanted to show you the clarity. F4, I was shooting here. And notice on the top left is the EXIF data. I forgot to mention that so you can see what the camera settings are. Here's just another image of one of these cool monuments. And the detail is just amazing. Now lens flare. Lens flare, I did notice, is pretty exceptionally noticeable on this camera. You don't see this as much on the Sony cameras from my experience. But you could see here shooting into the sun, there's this big blob here. And there's some purple up here as well. Okay, purple, you see that? So I took a couple of different shots and it was pretty interesting effect that was created here. Now if you're a lens flare fan, you're gonna like this. If you don't want lens flare, you're not gonna like this. I personally think it looks pretty cool. Now I took a couple of HDR shots as well with the Sony, so I wanted to compare what kind of HDR quality you can get. And to do HDR, you have to set the camera up for bracketing. So you take multiple exposures, okay, and then you combine them in post-processing. I used a program called HDRFX Pro, works really well. And these images came out pretty good. I had to work it a little bit harder than the Sony RAW files. Honestly, the colors and stuff were a little bit off, just probably because I'm not used to the camera. So here's a few more. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. And this was just a cool, you know, long exposure. So I was able to get a couple, couple of seconds because the lighting was low. This was a five second. It's a little overexposed, but I was taking brackets. So this was about a three second exposure. I was able to get like six seconds even longer with the Sony because of the built-in ND filter. But because the lighting was fairly low, I was able to still get some really good shots with the Leica. So I had to stop it down though. This was at F16. Okay, but the images came out really great. I mean, this one in particular looks awesome in my opinion. And here's just a single raw file for comparison, okay? So this is an HDR. This is just a raw file. And here's an HDR version. You can see it just looks awesome. And here's just testing out the flash. And the flash did a great job in my opinion. Really looks good. The skin tone colors look really good in this particular outdoor shot. A little bit flat looking. Here is no flash. So you can see the difference with a flash and without the flash. I just took a picture of a sandwich on the table here. I did the same thing with the Sony. And the flash is, sits much higher on the Leica when you put it in the hot shoe. So you don't get as much of the lens shadow. Uh, it depends on how close you are, of course. But I was just far enough away where you can just barely see a little bit of lens shadow on the bottom. All right. And again, the flash worked quite well in this scenario. Um, this was just another image on the deck I took. And again, here's one of Jace and the depth of field. You can see the leaf is out of focus. Layla in the background is out of focus. Jace is sharp. And here's one where the leaf is sharp. And you can see the focus worked really well there. And Jace is buttered out. And the chair is in the background also very smooth. That's pretty much it for the real world photos. Let's wrap this review up, guys. All right, shift it, Jace. Shift that sucker. Whoa! Look at it go. That's pretty cool. It really is strong.
All right, guys, that is about it for the Leica Deluxe review. I really hope you got what you were looking for. And like I said earlier, this camera in particular is, is in my opinion, designed for the more hands-on user. Uh, it's, it's very good build quality. It's very elegant. The body design is an elegant design. So if you're looking for something that's pretty and has that Leica logo, this is a great option. If you want all the same features, but you don't really care about the Leica logo, then check out the Panasonic LX100 series, okay? It's basically the same exact camera. It's, it's a really good camera. I had a lot of fun using it. At the end of the day, you can't go wrong with a camera like this. I do still prefer the Sony cameras, you know, for a number of reasons, as I mentioned earlier, but overall quality is very good. And uh, you're not going to be disappointed with a camera like this, in my opinion. The camera's amazing in the real world. It's a great tool for capturing moments, and it's more than capable of getting killer results in both video and photography. So that is about it. I really hope you got what you're looking for. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Be sure to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and also in the community area now on the channel. You can see there I've been posting some stuff. Also, be sure to check out SonyAlphaLab.com. And if you guys have questions, be sure to ask them below. Comments, let me know what you think of the review. I will catch up with you guys next time. Stay tuned.